Welcome back to Silent Hill 4, The Room. In the last episode, we went inside of the Wish House, the orphanage run by the cultists, and the person we gave the chocolate milk to either burned themselves alive or somebody murdered them by burning them alive. Either way, they burned alive right in front of us while carving a number into their chest. That part, it definitely looks like they did themselves. I'm really curious where the hole is going to take me now, because normally I get back here by going into a hole. But this time, I didn't go into a hole. It's just the end of that cutscene after watching them get burned alive. Then we just woke up back in the bed. So where's this actually going to take me? Hole has changed again, and I think I can hear children's voices. Keeps getting bigger. Where the hell are we now? There's a sloppily written note on the ground. Lucky, I finally escaped from the cell. I decided to take a careful look around this building. The scariest place was the first floor basement. There's a kitchen in the northeast, but next door, in the northwest, is a death chamber. To get in there, you have to punch in the right numbers. I don't know the numbers, and it was too dark to even see the panel, so I didn't go in. A death chamber. Gotta punch in some numbers to get into the death chamber. Walter's gonna kill me. Hey? Can I talk to you? I guess I can. I just need to find the key to let him out. Kill me! Oh, that's a part of the pipe that broke off from here. Yeah, this whole place is leaky and watery. Whoa. What the f- What are these things on the ground? Are they gonna hurt me? Why is there somebody above me? They're kinda cute. Look at them wiggle around. I think they start moving when I move. The person up there is really moving. I'm trying to see if there's any connection between where I move and where the person up there moves. Don't think don't think so. Get me out. 
I'm trying. Oh, there's a noose there. Something's written. I'm sick of being watched. Was that what I was hearing above in that other room? Just people observing? Oh, they're here too. Are they just pacing around the circle, just observing people from above? I love that I can hear them and even see their shadows, so if I looked up, I presume I'd be able to see them, but I can't look up. It's eerie. Oh! Uh... Uh... Should I leave? They're kind of growing. What the fuck are they? Oh! Okay. can't hold any more. You're limited on the amount of ammo you can hold? Whoa. That's also new. That was never a thing. Uh. Interesting. So, I, I really can't hold very much at all. Wait, maybe it's not ammo, but just items in general. Maybe if I just, like, drop one of these golf clubs or something, I'll be fine. Um... I have an idea. I guess it doesn't break if you're not using it against an enemy. Also, I figured out how to get the description for items that you've already picked up. You gotta select them and then press the, uh, what is that, the back? Yeah, the back button on my Xbox 360 controller. So that's how we do it. It doesn't seem like I can drop items, though. I think I would have to go back to home and put them in that chest. So I think I'm going to have to come back for this ammo. Almost every door tried. Right? So these two need keys. Actually, wait, there's four of them that need keys. And there's also one outer door. He's gonna kill me. Oh, and here's a hole. Convenient. Wait, what's this? Sloppily written note. To get to the surveillance rooms in the middle of this complex, you have to use the corpse disposal chutes in the cells. However, on the first and second floors, these cells are locked. That's so the kids wouldn't discover them. <laughs> the kids. <laughs> Was this facility also made by the cultists? The same ones that ran the orphanage? So you have to get to the first floor from one of the cells on the third floor. I know how to do it, but it's really a pain. Also, the lights only work on the third floor. Guard's Diary. Something on the radio? Or TV? I don't remember turning this on. Even when I turn the power off, the screen stays on.
soothing. This crap of red paper is stuck in here. Lately, I've been feeling like my life is in serious danger. I've been through a lot in my life, but I've never felt this kind of pure animal fear. In case something happens to me, I've decided to write down what I've learned for whoever you are that's living in the apartment now. I've been investigating the mass murder that took place seven years ago in which ten people were killed in ten days. They were killed in a variety of ways, but the one thing they had in common was that each corpse had the following numbers, in order of their deaths, carved into them. I guess that's probably the numbers that I've written down. His name was Walter Sullivan. April 4th. Okay, I've got a couple things that I've just noticed. One of them is if we go back to... Is it Jasper's memo pad? No, Holy Scripture scrap. Um, offer the blood of the ten sinners. Offer the blood of the ten sinners. So that's what it was talking about in that bloody note. Or the, the Red Diary. Was it April 4th? Yes. The Ten Sinners. Right, uh, seven years ago, the murder took place in which ten people were killed in ten days. In order of their deaths carved into them. So you can see that it increments up. 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 4, and all the other numbers are the same. It just increments the first number for which order they were killed in. First kill, second kill, and they were also killed in separate days. So first day, second day, third day, etc. So that's the 10 people that were killed, which also matches with the 10 sinners. However, something's different now than it was back then, it seems like. So 10 sinners. These were the 10 sinners that were killed seven years ago. But the numbers that I have written down, that I've gotten from people uh, that were carved into them, the first one I got was Cynthia. It's carved into them. Second one I got was on the casket in the cemetery and the third one was on the person who um, got burned the numbers I have written down they all end in one two one just like these here but they start with 16 that's cynthia i think 11 that's the casket i think and then 17 which is the person who got burned which in order of increasing like you know days after is when they died makes sense the casket one number 11 was very early if it just happened now, and this last one here, uh, the 10th kill was done 7 years ago, then the one in the casket that was number 11th is like the whole start of maybe a whole new 10. And then 16 was Cynthia, and then if the latest one that just happened in front of me was number 17. Then that makes sense why they would be a, a bigger number than Cynthia, because Cynthia was killed before them. Does this mean Walter Sullivan is killing another 10 sinners? The casket was the first one of their new start. Then Cynthia. Then the chocolate milk person. I don't know their name. I don't know if we even ever knew their name or if I just forgot it. But I'm just going to call them the chocolate milk person. If they're the 17th, then there's three more kills to go. Also, 17, 17, 17. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 16, 17. We have 17 handprints. Two of them fresh. The two fresh ones being Cynthia and Chocolate Milk Guy. Wow, they're just staring at the door, just deep in thought. Is that the person who said I've heard this noise before? All those years ago, or is that someone else? I think it's the person, but I'm not sure. Oh, fuck, this is creepy. Putting the pieces together and I don't like him. God, they're stuck in some uncomfortable loop. I know that's probably just because that's just how they made it. You know, that's just how they designed it for the game, but it also sort of feels appropriate. Because it feels so stilted and unnatural. Oh. 
As if they're watching TV and I'm watching them like their TV. Okay, let's put away some things. So, I don't think I'm going to need these placards for a long time, I feel like. Probably not until I have all of them or something. So, let's put those away. I don't think I need Lynch Street Line coin anymore. I don't think I need the wine bottle. Even if it is a weapon, it's fine. And I don't think I need two nine irons. Oh, look at this! There's a six iron and a nine iron. They're different irons. Maybe there is a whole set that you can collect. Okay, I'm just going to put both of these in here then. I don't want to break any. I really do want to get the whole set. They're not just clones of each other. And I'll go save. Look at those just bare fan blades up there for ventilation. Not even a grill over them. So we got two doors. In very odd places too. Like a room that has three doors. One big door and then as soon as you come in you have to turn like a sharp 90 degrees to get to either of the two doors and then the rest of the room is nothing. It's weird. Oh wait, what am I doing? I... Oh! I know exactly what I'm doing. Get the fuck away from that sound. I need to go back for that ammo. Okay, let's go find that horrible noise. you. They were on the escalator thing. Hmm. Do I have to waste ammo on you? Whew. Good. I don't. Whoa. Oh, you can't kill them. You can only temporarily make them go down. Alright. Damn it! Gotta commend their strength, though. Come on, let me go. Okay, it might be better just to run past him, honestly. And now we're back to the beginning. I guess I should have just gone down the ladders. Wait, what's this? Is that where I came in? Wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. Something's weird about this space. What just happened? There was a door. Before, when I first came in, there was a door and then there was a ladder that went down. Now there's a door and a ladder that goes up. And also a ladder that goes down? Yeah. This is, um... And these are like steps here. Very, very shallow steps. I think as I go around this clockwise, it's like corkscrewing down. question is, do I want to go down the ladder to just like skip all these enemies or keep going through the corkscrew? I don't want to miss anything, so I'm going to go the long way. See, like here's something on the ground. I would have missed the Saint Medallion can be equipped along with a weapon anti-spirit effects while held but will eventually break. Huh. Anti-spirit. 
What's considered a spirit? I mean, I haven't seen anything that's explicitly like a ghost, but I'm guessing the floating people are probably spirits. Maybe these are spirits? Let me try it. Well, actually, I'm gonna unequip it. I'm not seeing any more of those things coming out of the wall. What the hell? Giant water wheel? Also, some of those bug things. Are the bug spirits? There's something written on the plate. To turn on the lights in the third floor cells, turn this water wheel. Remember that the water must flow in the direction of the water wheel. Of course, you also have to open the sluice gate on the roof. <laughs> of course. I just went all this weight going down and now I need to go up, apparently. You copied the water wheel room plate message into your scrapbook. Okay, what about that key? I'm sorry, did I get the key? No. Where, where is it? It's a key. What's a key? I don't see it. Water prison exit key. Um, second floor basement up is carved into it. Maybe a shortcut to get out of this damn place? Are you still alive? I thought that one was dead. Oh my god. It's a zombie. more. Is there something I'm supposed to turn to make the water wheel turn? I know I need to open the sluice gate, obviously, but like, is there something I'm supposed to do from down here? Before or after the sluice gate? I don't see any controls. Got a feeling these bugs might just keep coming. Just the one door down here, right? Yeah, I should probably go through the hole though, right? Just pacing back and forth, wondering what to do about this. Well, I, whatever you do, I hope you do it sooner rather than later. I've got a feeling that Henry Townsend might be the 20th kill. Before I get eaten alive, let's uh, go through the door. Oh, that's not what the key was to. Maybe it's deeper in here. Look at this massive turbine. Hmm. This looks important. Maybe a boss room. There's one of those symbols on the wall and it's very, very large. I think I'm going to call it here. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, we're going to check out that huge symbol on the wall.